Are we on? We are on. <laughs> we are live. on. All right. Just for the for posterity, this is the uh, in web browsers and IPFS GUI working group weekly team catch up. Um, and the we're going to start with reviewing the OKRs for the first quarter and checking in, seeing how we're doing. Um, and then we're going to just come up with high level first draft of OKRs for the next quarter. Hey, I'll just yep. paste, uh, sorry, sorry for interrupting, but I'll just paste the link to the old OKRs mm -hmm. so that we can all open. Uh, I'd rather not share anything from my, uh, my laptop because I'm recording and mm -hmm. maybe too much for it. So if uh, anyone wants to share, that's perfectly fine, but I, I just won't, won't do that from my machine. Mm. Uh, I think as long as either people can remember them or they have them up on up in front of them, I'm going to just quickly whiz over the headlines. The objectives for the first quarter were that the in web browsers working group has a shared understanding of how IPFS should work in web browsers. Um, I still think that is a useful goal and one that we haven't finished defining. Um, we're, so yeah, the big, the the one that we're missing is document the user journeys that capture an ideal user experience for using IPFS in daily web browsing. Um, I feel like I personally have a much better understanding of what's needed through researching what the existing user interfaces do, uh, but I don't know how everyone else feels about that. I, I don't think we as a working group yet own the story on how IPFS should work in web browsers, and that was the that was the ideal outcome of this. Yeah, like my, my intuition is the same. We have a lot of, um, we did a lot of uh, soul searching in this, uh, yep. in this area. And I feel that we, we can just uh, copy this objective to the next quarter yep. and create appropriate uh, like uh, key results that are continuation of this effort. Uh, Yep. like on it's like an ongoing effort mm -hmm. so just in ilc this morning i was kind of suggesting that i think the creating of brand the brand book was a kind of more general uh, effort that i think agatha is pretty happy with she's she's done uh, the first implementation of that and it seems good um but the style guide and ui kit there's there's something that exists but my concern from david's feedback on the desktop designs was that if we use the the UI kit as presented, we end up with a design that we're not yet happy with. So uh, I'm keen to pause coming up with like how should an input box look until we have decided what it is web UI is going to be. So I, I do see that as an important thing, but we'll bump it to the end of next quarter, I think. Uh, so like uh, when it comes to uh, key results that we would assign, let's say uh, assigned to Agatha, Mm. Are we like uh, putting a pause on this, or are we just uh, rena like reframing it to, uh, let's say, wireframing web UI or something like that? Yeah, I, I think at this level, so the, the kind of objectives and key results level, the key result is going to be something around having an incredible like uh, coming up with a metric for des for deciding how good design is is going to be difficult. If you know what I mean? Like, I don't think that the specific key result is having a UI kit per se. It's having a web UI that we think is really usable, really simple, looks amazing, people want to use it. And yeah, or, or maybe we could even uh, do not uh, put any like subjective uh, yeah. interpretation on that and just say that uh, the key result is to have at least one or two iterations of uh, yep. web UI wireframe, for, and maybe that's enough for a yep. result definition. That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I probably shouldn't dig too deep into all these individual key results because we'll be here all day. Um, yeah, like uh, but, generally speaking, uh, we had this feedback from Matt that we should not have more than like three or five key results yeah. per objective, and yeah. no more than like three or five objectives. So yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah agreed so i think um yeah we were kind of used to writing github issues when we first started this process so we were trying to write one line for each concept 
Um, did a little, 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 but yeah, what I was kind of saying was more generally like I'm paused on any style guide stuff until we've figured out which what widgets we need. Um, do a little, 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 little. So yeah, okay. Uh, shared understanding. We need to copy across. Uh, um, objective two. Browser developers understand the requirements of the decentralized web. Uh, this also still needs to happen. Yeah. Um, I am I'm working on are we distributed yet dot com right now. Uh, I've just pushed uh, converting it to a Hugo site uh, so that start just editing data to add more topics to it. So it's now ready for other people to start filling in more nuanced information about what what we want, what we need from browser vendors to make the distributed web a thing. Um, uh, I think Kyle has been pulling together people who should be on a mailing list. Yeah. So I think this is all in progress, but I think, again, this one needs to be copied over, essentially, where we can come up with. Yeah, it's okay. like, uh, uh, especially the networking related stuff that mm -hmm. takes time. And yep. uh, there's this uh, addressing on the decentralized web. Uh, I had a like synchronization and catch up with uh, Lars last week, I mm -hmm. think, regarding that. Uh, we like, exchanged notes and we had some general discussion in the direction where this document should go. Mm -hmm. uh, but it it won't happen this quarter. Like I was too like way too optimistic when it comes to like challenges when what what we want from this document and after discussion with Lars it like broadened uh, scope in my head a little bit uh, especially that before we provide technical details we should provide a very good high level case and there is a ton of notes and there needs to be done a lot of editing related stuff uh, like worked before we can call it a draft so that I, I'll just move it to qu next quarter mm -hmm. cool uh, number three move towards IPFS working seamlessly in browsers uh, I think this one we've got the most progress on yeah like th th this one is fantastic we like window IPFS was like nice to have and right now i'd say it's like the main feature we have and it made embedded js ipfs node much more relevant mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because like without without uh, this there was like ah it's nice we can upload but yeah when we have window ipfs object you can actually run distributed applications as long as you take advantage of it so that's it's a fantastic progress I, my personal idea when it comes to this is to uh, iron all the performance related kinks when it comes to sharing and pinning maybe mm -hmm. not only performance but ux stuff mm -hmm. like user just drags and drops huge directory it should like work be slow mm -hmm. but work and another idea is to we probably should have some kind of key results related to this sharing revamp, or maybe that's for the next one. I'm not sure. Maybe we should match those two. Mm -hmm. Now that we have a low level window IPFS, mm -hmm. um, that's my take on that. Um, when you say merge, you mean merge the like sharing? Like we have this move towards uh, IPFS working seamlessly in browsers. This is like more technical one. Uh, I, I like. I feel something related to Brave integration. Maybe hmm. we should have a key results related to to, to like Brave uh, mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, just to signal it's an like ongoing effort, and maybe mm -hmm. this sharing and uh, UX to, tweaks uh, should go to the next one, the, the fourth one, right? Uh, like a fourth objective. Yeah, like this provide a nice desktop experience because okay. it's like more, more like anything here related to UX. I, I'd say should go to the last one, and the yeah. third one should be like maybe we should provide more. Uh, I don't know more sample apps. I, I'm not sure, but mostly like I, yeah. I'd say uh, performance fixes, right? 
I, I think, um, yeah, we don't have to, we need to aim for three or four objectives and it may be that we're just copying them over, but it may be that, that we need to reframe them slightly mm -hmm. to more, to better capture what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, point taken. Uh, more sample apps would definitely be a good, uh, how do we educate people about window.ipfs's existence and how they can build distributed apps. I think, I think we need to be trying to build some distributed apps very soon so that we dog food this new, now that window IPFS exists, like we need to try and build some things on it so that we can write the, write the guides. All right. Like we had this at some point we had uh, when, at the moment when we were just writing uh, GitHub issues, uh, secure results, uh, uh, we had a um, uh, key result that said we should implement web IPFS object support within PureBot. Maybe mm -hmm. we should visit that, something like that or just go over our application and see yeah. when, when we can do that. I think yeah. we should, uh, I think we can now actually send a pull request to PeerPad. Like, if I was just waiting for all of the pieces to be in place uh, before. Uh, before I could send one to PeerPad, but yeah, I can um, also just back on the uh, lots of sample apps. Uh, I can totally get behind that. <laughs> uh, uh, there's two that I did already. Um, one with the PubSub chatting and one with the peer peer map thing. Um, but yeah, some more some more would could always be good. Uh, yeah, and like Web UI will be one of them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. The big one. That's <laughs> like, like that's very important. That it will be a core feature that we use on daily basis. So we will like catch all the problems before exactly. everyone else. I, I we, deal. There'll, yeah. there'll be no problems, but sure. Yeah. Um, but the and just well, it's highlighted the brave stuff uh, is paused. The pull request is open. Um, in as much as the the uh, IPFS companion works in Brave, but without register stream protocol, we can't get the nice URL bar handling that we want, where we can literally return uh, files directly from the embedded IPFS mode, which is where we want to get to. The pull request that can make that happen is uh, sat with them. They've put some comments on it, so I need to get back to them about that. Um, but again, yeah, it's still not going to get in for. Q1, but we can reframe the key result for Q2 to have it to, to get it released. Like we know think, what needs to happen. I think um, the with the what with uh, copying stuff over and reframing them, I think we should definitely reframe. Um, I don't. I, I I'm curious to know how we give give off the impression that we have made process uh, progress without like without just copying them over because it. We need to now say, well, we have actually made some progress and now now we know that these are the problems rather than just copying over the same things. So, um, yeah, I strongly agree we should reframe the, what we have there, even if we are sort of saying we are copying them over, but we've made progress on almost everything we've yeah. talked about so far. I agree. Uh, on the flip side, I think it's totally reasonable for a, a, a specific topic working group. If If we came up with good objectives in the first quarter, it's probably okay that our objectives haven't changed that much in the second quarter. But yeah, the key results may, may need a little bit of evidencing that things yeah, have like, moved on. Yeah, like that is uh, another step in the right direction. Um, um, but the documentation is improving all round, mm -hmm. so that's good. Um, I guess of note there, we perhaps didn't do necessarily a great job of creating a key result that could be measured but i suppose the documentation is up to date so i think that one's the success yeah like we have uh, in companion we have docs directory that we started mm. putting uh, docs there and there is no longer a one huge readme and one huge like developer notes on the contribute page so i think that's quite useful and we like yeah that that's Linkable documentation is slowly growing, so I'd say we made a good progress. I think if we release Companion and people come to the site and start opening issues saying, how do I do this or what do I do, then we know we haven't got done a good job on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Uh, but if we can then just point them at the dock, uh, then then that's good. Yeah, like exactly. we we should surface those documentation, like those docs in uh, Rails notes, and uh, the, the the blog post that will happen after, um, so that people won't uh, ask the, those questions. They will just a link there. Um, so the next two, uh, uh, you are can, 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 pardon me. Yeah. Compa <laughs> companion follows draft of IPv style guide. Well, that's not happened because I haven't committed to the style guide yet. Um, switch to Jenkins based CI process for companion. That has happened. That's done. Sweet. Yeah. Um, Enrique, desktop, yeah. the IPFS GUIs. You've been, you have been fighting the upload. You've, you've made it work by force of will. Uh, yeah. Uh, about these key arms, the first one was assigned to you, the published sign releases of desktop. I don't know if the secret management in Jenkins is already working. So I don't know if you can do that or not. Victor probably knows that better than me. Um, the at test coverage reporting and achieve eighty percent coverage. I don't know if we should do that because we are going to change desktop to use web UI behind. So what do you think? Should we yeah, uh, should I, I work should I work towards eighty percent coverage, knowing right. that in the future that the code will be completely different? Uh it's a good point. Um Probably not. And that's the same for the documentation for desktop because it will change in the near future. It will be completely different. Yeah, I would imagine that this uh, this entire key result will definitely change focus. This one won't be copied across without significant changes. Yeah, like what what we need are this is called like coming from uh, uh, is missing on the uh, IPFS companion side. Is that uh, we for the desktop app we should have an integration tests which are like running actual application and for like it's electron so there are probably some tools and we could reframe this from uh, like we want eighty eight percent of uh, test coverage to like create a test framework that runs integration tests of desktop app on different platforms. Because right now that now that we have Jenkins, and I've played with it a little bit, it's very good idea to have jobs that run tests on Mac, on Windows, like Linux, and see what's different. Because there is always something <laughs> different. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be my idea to to reframe it. Uh, Lido, do you know if you can? Uh, do like Selenium testing with uh, a web extension or anything? Does it, how does it work? Oh no! Like in in past we had uh, support at the SDK level that you were able to inspect if uh, browser Chrome like if the toolbar has the button that should appear when we define it in the API. That's no longer the case. We don't have access to those APIs. Where did I go? What? Like uh, it was uh, um, provided by old uh, SDK in Firefox, and it's just got deprecated. We it's like a functional regression when it comes to uh, browser extension development. We no longer can inspect uh, browser internals. I filled like a year ago, maybe longer. Uh, ticket on the uh, like Mozilla repo for WebEx tool that we are missing this functionality for integration testing. They said that like you can run tests with things like Mocha or maybe Karma, but you won't have access to those low-level uh, like browser interfaces. And I feel that this is possible but it requires changes in the browser, like adding some additional restricted API APIs that will let you to access those things, but only when 
like this tool WebEx uh, is running on the same machine that your browser extension or something like that. It's like sec pro sec I feel it's a security problem. They explicitly made browser uh, like web extensions uh, limited, and they don't want to uh, like go back to the uh, ecosystem when you you can just read stuff from your disk or access some random memory. In so that's that. Yeah, Ollie. I was just going to say that's probably deep enough for the history of web extension testing. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And just to get it back to desktop. Sorry. <laughs> um, but the point remains, um, uh, Enrique's point is totally valid. Like We're not going to copy this, this OKR across, but there's going to be we're going to want to rebuild web UI very test driven. Like we're going to want good coverage from day one because we're going to, we've built our prototype versions. This, this one is like the production grade one where every, everything is tested. Uh, and then with desktop as the wrapper, we will want tests for, for the desktop specific functionality. So we will, we'll definitely want a test for the, the install flow, not not the installer per se, but that first new user experience of if they don't have a an IPFS repo, things that are slightly beyond the scope of the web UI, we would that would be amazing to have tests for that. And it's yeah, like a t test matrix for different like platforms, free platforms. Yeah, definitely all of that. But yeah, not right, not this moment. But for like goals, goals for Q two, we're going to want that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, I mean, on balance, you know, <laughs> some, of, some of our OKRs are done and some of them aren't done, but I don't think it's, uh, it's not really about that at this stage. This was about finding our feet and getting used to the OKR process. Yeah, I mean, what Little said, uh, I, I, it sounds as though we were a little bit overly ambitious with what we were trying to do for, for the quarter, but, uh, just to give itself some oh, slack. Yeah. No, totally. I, I, partly that. I think also that we were more interested in building the apps that we already understood uh, than generating user stories. And that's partly because of, you know, who we are and developers and stuff. Yeah, and, we, and an, an, another th thing is that we were still, like, we are, were building a team. And generally speaking, the OKR process works best when it's like an ongoing process uh, that you have at least one quarter back to look back and ponder. Like, on. Right. And we had, like, yeah, so I feel we did not do uh, bad uh, given that we just started doing stuff. <laughs> Even though we did not uh, explicitly know what has the higher priority than other things. Yeah, totally. I, I think we did fine and we're going to do better next year, next quarter. Huzzah. <laughs> um, bu -bu -bu -bu. So I think the first two goals, the first two objectives, we have a shared understanding of how IPFS should work in browsers and browser developers understand the requirement of decentralized web. I think those objectives we would probably copy across. Then three and four are more up for grabs in terms of how we nuance them. How, how do we express our kind of focus on wanting to build web UI? Like we want to spend most of our time building web UI together. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to sort of change, we definitely want to change that. And we need to reduce the number of key results and that kind of thing. But so. Generally that's, speaking, like that's the challenge. my idea was to remove the last two or maybe merge them and reframe them around web UI because like web UI related work will touch both desktop and browser extension and even like the, end users uh, experience so maybe we should like create an objective to deliver like initial beta or something like that of web ui by the end of the quarter like working minimal working example that takes advantage of web ipfs object and stuff like that yeah and uh, write key results around that yeah yeah three months i reckon we should 
We should, oh, yeah. we should go bigger. <laughs> <laughs> we should have we should have a really good web UI deployable in Go IPFS. That would be my. You know, it's like it should at least be have the feature. The, we have to define what's like the smallest feature set for it to be worth replacing the existing web UI. Whether do we have to have a one for one with the existing features before yeah, like, or it's ready? Or yeah, but there's not much right now in web UI. When you like, I, <laughs> well, like it, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it did its yeah. job in its day but like if we make it better and just do those things uh i want i just want to ask a question uh, about web ui do you think it would be better to build it from zero or to reuse the current code because i think it's a bit confusing the ac the actual code my my assumption would be this would be a, a clean slate and that we would we would use the existing implementation as the as like a reference for what's the minimum feature set but yeah. the code but the, the it would start with a fresh repo i think okay um, i think it's better i think so too i think you know it's a bunch of other people's decisions that that we're now going to have to take take ownership of and maintain mm -hmm. and feel confident in so you know we can and do all that. We can do all the hard work as long as we get to have the fun as well of starting a new project. We, yeah, like maybe it's not the proper time to ask this, but should we create a new repository or should we just work on a separate branch? Uh, like personally, I'd like to keep the repository just for uh, like historical stuff that we like there's a lot of issues and discussions and design decisions within existing repository so that's like an argument why we should create a new branch just rem like remove everything or just start a new branch from scratch right and uh, at some point you just replace master with it yeah i'm fine with that but um we will i guess we'll know better once we've been through the wireframing process but i think that's the general feeling um yeah. yeah. Okay, so the yeah. Uh, and should web UI depend? No, should web UI depend on Go IPFS implementation, or should web UI depend on Companion and use Window IPFS? That's a good question. I think it, I think web UI is going to depend on Window IPFS. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that that should be like the, the default. And that would uh, r remove the security concerns yeah. a lot of people have. And so if we make a web UI uh, default to web IPFS and actually to only work with that, that would be fantastic because there would be no direct interaction with IPF like API port. And I feel that that's very, very important. Yeah. It's worth it's worth mentioning that it's not um, so by using window.ipfs we're not it's web UI isn't depending on companion in that way like that's just something that companion provides and uh, and this is exactly what um, electron will provide or you know the desktop will provide uh, in the same way as companion does uh, it, like it's not it's not tied to companion if you see what I mean but it can be used with companion like you could just have companion installed and while we're deving it um, we can use window.ipfs there um, but you know when it's released in desktop um, the electron wrapper will provide window.ipfs and um, yeah and then you know it could like I know we're saying it should only use window.ipfs but it could fall back to using JSIPFS API um, at maybe even initially so that it can be but just be bundled with go ipfs as, as it is right now um yeah absolutely i think we would uh the transition path and the de deployment and support what what scenarios must be supported and what where we'd like to get to it, it can be a transition path to like only ever use window.ipfs but i think it would as alan said would bundle uh, JS IPFS API with it. If window.ipfs doesn't exist, then use the fallback. Yeah, like like uh, do what 
it's happening right now just re refuse to work with uh, api if it's not running on localhost right and uh, that's perfectly exactly. one to one yeah. replacement yeah um ba -ba 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 -bum, but we have drifted from the agenda da -da 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 feedback so uh i think we've covered how we got on with q1 and basically where we're going for q2 at high level we haven't managed to come up with the wording of the third objective but i wasn't expecting to get all that done on this call anyway i think we've got a sense of it's basically web ui and how we what's our objective for web ui is essentially what we're talking about Does that people agree with that yeah okay cool um so maybe we could hang around on irc after this call and just thrash out that third objective that would be useful mm -hmm. um but, but there's some other notes in the agenda about feedback from other working groups are there any okrs that require support from qa testing and dev team enablement or any other working group yeah like so do we... uh, this is uh, something i wanted to highlight uh, victor asked me to ask the entire working group uh, is there anything related to infra like infrastructure uh, testing tools like jenkins or like that auto deployments uh, websites uh, that we need help with and so far i identified this need for providing a working solution for sh sh uh, shared secrets in uh, jenkins builds that would benefit both uh, ipfs desktop for uh, like application and installer signing as well as browser extension because if we had this uh, secret solution in place we could have a dedicated uh, beta branch and every time we merge stuff to beta branch uh, beta would be automatically signed by mozilla and it would be automatically deployed to uh, like firefox store and chrome store and that way if uh, a bus hits me you can still do a release <laughs> oh, no. oh no i think yeah i feel yeah i think uh, david also has uh, access to mozilla store but still <laughs> just don't get hit by a bus yeah that's our, that's our current solution it's um, working well so far yeah so don't, like don't say that <laughs> Yeah, but uh, coming, coming, going back to this uh, request, do we have any urgent needs when it comes to uh, to like this infrastructure, uh, infrastructure QA? Or... I mean, I've, I've used Jenkins a, a ton in the past, but it'd be good to get, I, I don't know where I go and find out what our particular Jenkins setup supports. So it'd be good mm -hmm. to just get a, an introduction to it. Like, like yeah, like, so uh, I think I'll like provide feedback to Victor that we would love uh, to see some instructions how to set up uh, like builds for different uh, platforms, right? Yeah, Alan. Uh, yeah, so I just had a suggestion. W when it says QA, uh, I just thought it'd be rad if we could get like a whole bunch of people to use some of the things that we're building and give us some kind of feedback on the UI, like how it works and like what they thought about it, um, you know, that yeah. sort of thing. Does that fall under QA? Oh, I, I think it's most, <laughs> this QA is more fr fr from the technical side. Like, right. Uh, but we can, uh, we can and we will do organize some people when we write blog posts that advertise our beta channels. And I, I, feel, th I, th I think yeah, this is a really, really, a really good point. Um, when we release new web ui new desktop new ipfs companion uh there's an assumption that other members of ipfs will test it um we'll try it out we'll eat dog food it um but we should probably make that a bit more explicit like it'd be useful uh, and also undoubtedly some members of ipfs will install it and do test it but it'd be nice to make that a bit more explicit in terms of like, we would like your feedback now in this document rather than have you raise an issue in three months time saying you don't like it. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? Like if we, if we are more proactive in seeking out feedback on our terms when we're ready for it, 
then we'll get a bit less of this like oh i don't like tabs or you know like feedback that that is indicative of a problem but isn't quite as useful as feedback at the right time in the process uh, and i imagine we'll also want to include that at the wireframe stage and no doubt uh, david ds will give us plenty of feedback once we've got some usable wireframes and designs but just thinking about it as proactive rather than reactive but seek it when we're ready for it yeah maybe some kind of a process within protocol labs or maybe core group or, or generally protocol labs team that uh, encourages dog fooding <laughs> I, I think everyone's totally up for it uh, and as long as we're a bit noisy as long as we make a big point about it uh, at the right time I think we'll get lots of good good information yeah yeah I can't think of any other I don't really know what all the working groups are off the top of my head so I don't know what we need from the rest of them um, um, yeah like uh, one uh, 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 uh. Yeah, like I, I had the discussion with Kyle re regarding uh, uh, public gateways, but I think that work will be kind of parallel to what we will do with uh, sharing uh, UI this quarter. So I don't feel think we will need anything from each other. At least I, nothing comes up to my mind, mind at this point. But if you like have any ideas what we may need from other groups feel free to raise that there are things like rate limiting bandwidth limiting and uh, like creating statistics per something more than the entire repo that we could ask and communicate to let's say go ipfs team uh, but i feel that may happen at the end of this quarter after we have wireframes and we have more solid examples of UI that we want to build that we can't fully build without those APIs or features of backend services. And I feel maybe in next quarter we will have some solid specific uh, key results <laughs> to, to add to other groups. De demands. Demands, yeah. oh yeah. 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 Uh, I, think, I think that's really good. I think it'd probably be worth queuing them up now. To say, like I think I think just knowing how much bandwidth a specific CID has has have you have uploaded, like what's your things like this concept of your ratio of like if if you're hosting a public data set and it turns out to be super popular uh, and it's it is like the the peak of your bell curve of like where's all my bandwidth going and it's like oh well it's because I rehost the XKCD archive yeah and it turns out everyone everyone loves that. Yeah, um, we, we should also maybe if we have some ideas like that, we probably should very early do sanity check with backend because like some things that sound quite easy may not be easy <laughs> and they could provide us with a not as good but fine alternative. To, to that, what we want to build. So I think communication is quite important here, uh, so that we don't run into a situation when we ask backend for something that requires like huge refactoring or huge performance uh, the penalty. Uh, yeah. So communication. Yeah. Strongly agree. Um, but, 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 uh, I've been plopping in information on issues on Go IPFS as a kind of first step to that but um okay so next agenda item ipfs desktop release plan uh, we've only got five minutes left uh, but i think we've already touched on web ui revamp discussion at the bottom there um ipfs desktop release plan i think That's we all have it. yeah yeah exactly um yeah i think i was kind of saying we can't release it because it explodes when we add millions of files but I think Enrique's point is uh, the version three, version 0.3 explodes when we add millions of files, so we haven't broken anything. Yeah, the problem might be on Go IPFS itself and not on the desktop app. Might be. I seem to remember there being a problem with adding loads of files, um, I, but I couldn't find the issue, so maybe I just completely imagined that. But yeah. Um, I 
I can send the uh, uh, form. Uh, Enric? Yeah, all right, that's the issue. Yeah, I just send the issue to the chat. Um, I, I think we should release it as well. Um, mm -hmm. Da, 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 da. Oh, I'm just conscious that um, Lidl tends to be very cautious in his releases and releases them in a beta channel and then we wait another week and then it's still in the beta channel and then zero bugs get shipped to users and it's great. Um, da, 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 da. So have, has there, I guess everyone here has had a go at installing desktop from master and it's otherwise fine. Should do we? We should probably get a handful of others to try master first. It's, it's just uh, trying to get a kind of um, defined release process for desktop that similar to what Companion has currently. Um, so, Lidl, maybe you could talk to Enrique about what. Do you, whereabouts is your launch checklist? Is it docu oh, documented yeah, like, on a repo <laughs> and something that we can? No, no, no. Like the, it's an ongoing one second. Uh, uh, really, checklist. It's not like it's not that interesting. Is any of it relevant for desktop, or is it mostly? I, I don't okay. think so. <laughs> is it all very web extension specific? Yeah, like uh, we have uh, translations. Uh, we have some. I think um, orchestration around uh, around the way uh, Mozilla release signing yeah. happens. Mm -hmm. So it's like very 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 so unrelated stuff. Beyond, but I I think so for desktop we've installed it on OS X. We've installed it on Windows. You've installed it on a, a Linux flavor. Uh, we'd ne so now would be a good time to cut a v.04 release and then just tell like announce it on the all hands tonight and then get IPFS users to install it, like get IPFS crew team to install it. Yeah. That seems reasonable. Yeah, like it's in uh, two hours. So I, I, do you want to sprint a re release that fast? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, for, de for, for, for desktop, it doesn't. Um, it's not quite the same ceremony as far as I'm aware. Like it's a tag and a GitHub release. Like what's the bundling, bundling process? Yeah. 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 But still you want I, to write I, release notes. Or something I, like that. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't mind how fast we do it. I'm just taking Enrique's positivity and running with it. Um, yeah. Sure. So let, let's say, uh, let's try do it yeah. today. But if you will see that it will be a rush, rush yeah. job then we can safely push it to the next week nothing could no happen. I, I think more more to say like let's start the project, whatever it is i don't i've never released desktop so uh i'm assuming enrique i'm assuming that you're gonna do it like do the do the release and tell everyone yeah uh i can go to the to the ipfs lens today but i i will release the uh, ipfs stop 0 0.4 and i trust you, one of you to tell everyone okay <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, will you be able to write some release notes for that? Hmm? Will yeah. you be able to write the release notes for that? I already already wrote some stuff, but I don't think there is much, a lot of things to talk about in these release notes. Some bug fixes, and yeah. we are just using MFS on the fast tab. Nothing think, else. Uh, so I think that's quite a big one because it means if they've used desktop before, then everything they're used to seeing in desktop will no longer be visible. Yeah, I, so, I'll add that on the who listeners. <laughs> so for me, knows. like yeah, that's that's like the headline. Yeah, for me, that <laughs> switch to MFS. All yeah. your files are gone. We removed all your yeah. files. <laughs> uh, so I would, I would take a moment to to review how you want to do this release. I don't know if there's any. I don't know if there's any code we could write to streamline that process because it seems pretty surprising. And I'm, I think a bunch of IPFS team will have at least installed desktop at some point. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know the best way to manage that right now. No, I actually like uh, 0 
the change between 0 0.3 and the current one, I'd say is uh, a big one when it comes to stability and usability. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't feel that we should be skittish with releasing it. It's like a, a, a different different uh, use case than in companion because in, like in companion we have thousands of people like over 500 in the stable uh, channel uh, in Firefox alone. So the same from so I don't think uh, that many people use desktop yet. So we, we can be more brave. Yeah, Alan. Two, two things I just thought of. It would be awesome if we had some stats on how many downloads we have for uh, desktop, how many current users and stuff. Um, but also the, my other potential um, uh, high discussion point is, should we just release it as a major version number, seeing as it's a big breaking change? 1.0. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I appreciate the low number that uh, sets the proper expectations. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. yeah, I think, unfortunately, by pure Semva, yes, Alan, but uh, privileging the sub one. 1.0 numbers as beta work where you're not quite sure what the app should do <laughs> and everything everything is a breaking change <laughs> surprise um, more I think more concretely though I take Lidl's point that we shouldn't be too worried about it but I think hearing those words makes me a lot more worried because we actually have no idea how many people are using IPFS desktop and and we know that we're about to break it for everyone. So I think probably we should be a bit more considered in how we announce this change. Actually, I just came up with idea of uh, like key results or some feedback for other working groups. Uh, how should we, generally speaking, when it comes to IPFS projects or protocol labs, how should we track or even should we track how many users are uh, like installing, running our software or oh, high guide. Um, we were starting one hour earlier because of daylight saving time. And I think, I feel Kyle dialed in using the hour from the IPFS community calendar, right? Hello. Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. Lila was just expressing concern that perhaps you did not get the memo that time zone changed. Ah, oh, shit. Is it, did, <laughs> did it start at seven? Uh, yeah, like we, we have a summer time <laughs> right now. So we moved uh, this one hour. No, my calendar said eight, so that's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. We just have no permission to update the calendar. Sorry for that. Um, but we are recording this, so. <laughs> uh, go, going back to, 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 to my idea is that I was uh, asking, if we want to know how many people are using our browser extension or our desktop application, how can we track that? And should we track that? I feel that's a question that someone else could answer globally for like protocol apps. We have uh, some privacy concerns these days. That would be nice to know how many people are using that, uh, our applications. We can tell how many people are using stable uh, Firefox version and Chrome versions, but we have no way of telling how many people are running beta channel, for example, uh, on Firefox. So that's something I'll probably raise uh, and ask other working groups to address. 
I think it's a reasonable question. It's more along the lines of what what would we use the metrics for? And if it's to make decisions around how fast and loose to be with releasing, we can probably just uh, decide what our tolerances are for how tested is a piece of software before we launch it without tracking people. Like we, don't, we don't track anyone. I think Companion with its add-on store download stats, I think that's a perfectly adequate proxy for uh, how many people are using it for now. I don't think we need to install any extras. And I think it will, it just has more potential to annoy people than it does to give us useful information. Um, but that's just, that's just like my opinion, man. Um, anywho. Uh, okay, we we were just talking previously, just as Kyle arrived, we were talking about the desktop release plan, and we went from saying, let's launch it immediately, 0.4, to then me being like, oh, wait, if I forget, I just realized we're going to break existing uh, users' view of the world. 0.3 doesn't use MFS, and 0.4 will use MFS. Uh, so we need some messaging to explain that to people or we need to decide whether that's a significant enough issue that we should write code to copy across things that your desktop app in 0.3 can see into your MFS? I think it should be front and center at the very least. Um, we could provide a script that might do that if people really want it. I don't know, as a suggestion. Um, but yeah, I, we don't know how many people are using desktop, so it's difficult to make an informed decision about it. Um, but given we're on a zero point release and we don't think we don't think there are many people using it, we might we might just be able to get away with it. Yeah, like I, I would not spend many resources on that. Just put it in the bold font in the release notes that we are now using MFS and it's up to you to migrate anything if you still want to see it. Uh, oh, I mean, but on the, to counter that, this is, a, this is a project that lots of people are interested in. Uh, if anyone's interested in IPFS, it's entirely plausible that they've at least tried to use desktop. And if we, if we release a, if we cut a new release now that just loses all your files or appears to lose all your files, because of course they'll still be in your repo. You just won't be able to see them. That isn't a super great user experience for. Yeah. So my, I propose we create an issue in the IPFS desktop repository and to address this, like, should we create a migration script? And if this script is created, it should be like embedded within uh, application itself and when you install the latest version it should migrate your files automatically otherwise there is no point in making it uh, just for for the sake of writing that we've created the script it's either automatically and transparent to the user or we just put in the bold that we moved to MFS and uh, the, your files are go not gone but there, there's a different view for data right Okay, agreed. That's probably the last word on that. Um, do you want to talk about IPFS companion release at all? No, like it, it, like it, it will happen, and uh, my plan is to uh, as to make a release candidate this week. As soon as uh, I merge this PR from Alan regarding uh, IPFS files API na uh, name scoping. Mm -hmm. I feel that's important one. If you want to ship a release with a window IPFS object, we want to provide this namespacing out of the box so that there is no breaking change when it comes to application that people start playing with, writing with this API. So release candidate will happen this week. I'm not sure if today before all hands, maybe we'll take it slower, but it will happen this week. And maybe a release a week after that, if there are no bugs. Uh, there is some work related to localization. I realized that uh, there is a long story about uh, localization 
codes for weird languages. The problem with weird languages is that no one reported to me that translations do not work because one person is using that local. So I need to sort that out, but that's like a low priority if no one was reporting that it's not working. Probably everyone is running an English version anyway, but still I want to have localization working before the release. So that's the plan. In, within two weeks, we we'll, should have a stable release that it's just replacing the latest one. I think, I think your dedication to localization is super important and is only going to get more important as, as these apps get better. Uh, and it's a useful reminder that we need to bake that in in some form to Web UI next. Yeah, like uh, as, as long as you start uh, with creating English locale, that's enough to be honest, because like people will come to you and ask for localization or they will just add the pull requests. Then when you see there's a need, you just set up some maybe web uh, interface for providing uh, localization. But for now, just just make sure the local localization strings are in separate file. Like there's some kind of framework and that's all. Yeah, Ole. Uh, I, so I'm aware that it's been an hour. Just a quick, uh, the only other thing that I really wanted to talk about was we had a really, really productive session over IRC this last week. Um, so the general th thought was, would these weekly meetings be more efficient as a time that we all agree to be in the in web browsers IRC channel? just due to kind of uh, language barriers and time zones and bloody I mean, we can't solve time zones, but at least uh, IRC is slightly less cognitive load at seven in the morning than an IRC chat. Um, so, so often the time delays in IRC, uh, we just have to work around those because people check in and out at different rates. But if we had a kind of time window, uh, if we had a time, a start time, like a meeting, but that was conducted on IRC, that was like this uh, and had an agenda but we didn't have to sit on video um it was just put forward as a possible alternative to this and i wondered what people if that people were interested in that if they felt that i guess to counter that like do people feel that the video chat is important and useful or should we experiment with irc chat at a given uh, like i think it's more like being at available for conversation at a static time each week. Um, but I'd be interested to see if anyone has any thoughts against that. Anyone? I guess, I guess we can always jump on a call, an actual face-to-face -face call, if we decide that's needed, can't we, if we start off with IRC? Are, are you guys all based in Europe right now, like on this call? Yeah, um, I mean, with the, with the 7 a.m. context, like, don't worry about me. I mean, I'll, I'll get up as, I don't care. I get up at 6 a.m. anyway, uh, so it's, like, not that big of a deal for me. If you don't mind the way my hair looks, at least. Uh, but, um, yeah, don't, don't just do it because, like, it sucks for people over in Silicon Valley, a.k.a. me. Uh, you know, if, if you think the video calls are important, continue doing them. But I will go with whatever you guys want to do. Super good. Um, I think it's nice to get FaceTime every now and again, but I think it, it right now for us, it's more important that people feel that they can say what's on their mind and express themselves. And that seemed to work really well on ILC the other day. Um, just having like, it, it's really useful that we're all there at the same time so that the conversation flows. But... Got shouty people in the office. Um, it's useful that we're all there at the same time so the conversation flows, but it, it seems to unfairly privilege uh, native English speakers because of the way that like real time like conversation works. So IRC seems to be fast enough that we all got our thoughts across, but slow enough that we all had time to think about what we wanted to say. So that was the reason for suggesting it. Well, sounds good to me.
Super cool. Okay, so we'll try. So we'll have the meeting at the same time next week. Um, so seven a.m. Sorry, <laughs> um, and uh, we'll, but we'll just be on the in web browsers RC channel, and we'll just add that to the calendar whenever someone with calendar powers lets us do it. Uh, I'm now super aware that we've run over the hour, but if um, if there's any anybody has to dash off, nope. Um, Kyle, was there anything you wanted to talk about, seeing as we we met in secret without you? Uh, no, it's fine. I, I'm just I'm just listening in right now. I don't have any like specific things to add uh, to the conversation right now. Did Did you see the chat from ILC over the course of the week? the The major finding was a consensus around focusing on a rebuild of web UI going forwards, and rather than maintaining a separate desktop app to build web UI using window.ipfs as the communication mechanism so that we can reuse this code, the web UI code in desktop directly. Yeah, that, that's, that's great. I mean, you know, that's generally what, you, what I think we should do. Yeah. Super. Um, make cool. it so that it works for both. Yep. Yeah. It, it just seems to be a massive win in terms of effort, particularly also around like documentation when we make screencasts about how to use this thing. It doesn't matter whether you're a desktop user or a web user. It's the same same screencast applies yeah I think that makes sense <clears throat> yeah I mean you know if it's not working for some reason then you can always just make two versions right yep. uh, so yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. I, I, I am looking forward to seeing the wireframes uh, related to that uh, are, have those been published yet or We're, we are a designer down Agatha is ill uh, okay. so I've been focusing on are we distributed yet .com. I just ported that to a Hugo site to be in line with all the other IPFS sites, uh, but it's now driven from data, so we can start filling out, filling out the, the call to action. Beautiful. Um, All right. Did, did you, you had a good bunch of meetings with people last week. Did you get a chance to write anything up about what their what their needs and wants were? Uh, from like the sort of like what we need from from web browsers and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me, uh, let me, let me get that sent out. Uh, where, where should I put that? I, I, I guess in web browsers or in web browsers, I'll see it'd be fine. Okay. Yep. Super. Great. Um, and then I've got a mailing list I'm setting up this week finally. So uh, I'll get everyone invited to that. Perfect. Um, okay. Anyone got any other business? No other business than this has been the in web browsers working group team catch up and I'll see you on IRC this time next week. Da -la -la -la.